Hello friends, welcome to the Christmas special. This is episode number 6, we are halfway through. Today we are making a Russian Christmas bread, Krendel. Of course I'm biased, because I'm from that part of the world, but this was definitely one of my favorites. The soft texture and the sweet apple and dried fruit filling is really nice. So keep watching if you want to learn how to make it. And as always, you'll find a full recipe with all the details down in the description box. So first things first, let's see what equipment we need. You'll need a tray with some non-stick paper, a bowl for mixing your dough in, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, you'll need a rack, but you can live without that, and a little pot and a rolling pin. Now onto the ingredients. We need some strong white bread flour, milk, yeast, salt, sugar, a couple of egg yolks, some soft butter, vanilla syrup, and cinnamon. Now for the filling, you'll need some diced apple, dried apricots, dried pears, dried prunes, some butter, and some sugar. For the icing, we need some icing sugar, some lemon juice, and some vanilla syrup. Now let's start by making the filling. In a small pot, combine the sugar, pears, apricots, prunes, butter, and the apple. Now let's get over to the hob and start cooking. You want to cook this on a medium heat. It should not take more than 10 to 15 minutes. Just keep an eye on it, stir it occasionally, you want to cook it until it's nice and thick. You don't want any liquidy bits. If it's too runny and juicy, it will obviously leak out of the loaf. But this looks about right. Now get it in a small bowl, cover it up, and leave it to cool down at room temperature. Of course you can make this filling ahead of time, you could make it the day before. But make sure that it's at room temperature before you use it. Now let's get on with the dough. Now I know my kitchen is around 22 degrees Celsius, so I want milk to be around 8 degrees. Now get your bowl, add your milk, then in with the vanilla, yeast, salt, sugar, egg yolks, cinnamon. The only two ingredients left are the butter and the flour. Now before you add the flour, give everything a good mix. You want to dissolve any large sugar crystals and hydrate the yeast. And the butter will be the very last ingredient that we add. Now once everything's mixed well, add your flour and grab your dough scraper. Start mixing the dough. To avoid making a mess on the table, just mix the dough until it's one cohesive piece whilst it's still in the bowl. And if the scraper is not doing the job, continue on by hand. This dough is quite dry, so we'll use a regular kneading method for working it. What I like to do is press down and forwards with the heel of my right hand, and then using the fingers of my left hand, I fold the piece of dough under the heel of my right hand, then turn and repeat. Once you've done this a few times, the motion will become fluent. We need to work up some gluten before we can add the butter. So knead the dough like this for around 3 minutes. And after the first 3 minutes of kneading, we can spread the dough out on the table and start adding the butter. Now there's no pretty way of doing this. Just slap the butter on there, spread it out, start squishing it in. This is called tearing in the butter. There's no right or wrong. Just squish it, pull it, tear it, squeeze it. Do this for around 30 seconds. And afterwards, continue kneading, just as you did before. Try to pretend that this mess never happened. And trust me, this will become better soon enough. You want to keep kneading it for around 3-4 to four more minutes and all the butter will get absorbed. The dough should be nice and smooth, and now it's ready for the first proof. Get in a bowl and take the temperature. 26-27 degrees Celsius is just what I was looking for. Now cover it up and leave it to ferment. This should take around an hour. If your dough is cooler, it will take longer. If it's warmer, it will take less time. But you should definitely start puffing up a bit during this time. And after the first proof, we'll give it a fold. Folding benefits the dough in a number of ways. It will degas the dough, will create extra layers in the gluten structure, and will equalize the temperature. Performing a fold is quite simple. Place your dough out on the table, smooth side down, flatten it out, and then take an edge, Fold it over the middle, going around in a circle until you reach the point where you started and you have a nice tight ball. And you can clearly see that we are creating extra layers in the dough. Also if your dough had cooled down on the outside, it was still warm in the middle, by layering it up and folding it over, we are equalizing that temperature. It will give us an even fermentation. Now once you've folded it, flip it smooth side up again, tighten it against the table and back in the bowl it goes. Cover it up. We'll leave the proof for one more hour. Now it should really start puffing up. Right, so far so good. 
after the second proof, we can start rolling it. And if you have ever made cinnamon buns or Chelsea buns, this process will be very familiar to you. Get your dough out of the bowl, get a little bit of flour and your rolling pin. Dust it well, you don't want any stickage. Don't worry about adding too much flour at this point, you can always brush it off later on. Whenever I need to use a rolling pin, what I like to do is first dust the dough with flour and press it out by hand into a general shape, only then continue on with a rolling pin. You want to roll this until it's a large rectangle. Now in comes the filling. And this filling is quite soft and easily spreadable. Spread it all over the dough, leaving an edge at the top. Make sure everything's nice and even. Next thing you want to do is wet your hand and brush the edge with some water. This will help with sealing up the loaf. Now just double check that everything's nice and square. And soon we can start rolling. And again, if you've ever made cinnamon buns, you'll know exactly how to do this. Start from the bottom, fold the edge up, tuck it nice and tight, and then continue rolling until you reach the top. Try to do it as evenly as you can, don't rush. Now seal up the seam by pinching it, and also pinch together the end bits. We want this dough piece to be quite long, so you can roll it up a little bit more. And now comes the shaping part. It's quite simple actually. Make sure the seam is pointing down. You don't want to see that in your final loaf. Then shape it into an arch. Then bring in the two ends and twist them around each other a couple of times. And then press the end bits together so they're nice and sealed up. I have no idea what the shape is called. Maybe you can let me know down in the comments. Or whatever it may be, it's ready for the final fermentation. Get it on your tray, make sure there's some non-stick paper there. Start preheating your oven to 160 degrees C with a fan on. Make sure everything's nice and organized. Now cover it up and we'll leave it. It will take around one and a half to two hours. As we all know, a little bit of sugar added to a dough will speed up fermentation. If you use a lot of sugar, like we do here, it really slows it down. That's why this is taking a while. But you can see that this is puffed up beautifully. It's massive. Unlike most other breads, we're not glazing this. Just get it in the oven, it'll take around 50 minutes. If you are unsure of the doneness of your loaf, take the temperature. If it reads 94 degrees Celsius or 200 Fahrenheit in the middle, it's ready. Now whilst this is still hot, get it out on the rack, then place your rack over a tray because we'll be glazing this in a minute. Making the glaze super simple. To your icing sugar, add a couple of drops of the vanilla syrup, add in the lemon juice, and start mixing it. Ideally, use a fork. I found this to be the best tool for this job. And go slowly, you don't want to make a mess. And to adjust the consistency, add a little bit of water to it. You want this glaze to be nice and runny. The texture should be similar to condensed milk. And the last thing we need to do is glaze the loaf all over and then let it cool down completely before cutting into it. And that's the Russian Krendel. This is definitely one of the tastiest Christmas breads. I think the filling is what makes it, really. Check out my Christmas playlist. I got 12 different breads from 12 different countries in there. And as always, if you have any questions or suggestions, write them down in comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.